Chaining is and is not. You're working on brushing teeth, you break down all the behaviors. One, two, three, four. You've got that chain laid out. Everybody knows what to expect. You reinforce each next level more than you reinforce the previous one so that you get them moving on. Ch chaining is not when you're using shaping to teach where the location of the toothpaste and the toothbrush are. Okay, so that's where people sometimes think of shaping and chaining or not. Those aren't in chaining. Okay. okay, so procedure for saying cookie, ability to say cookie is what you are trying to get to. We call that the terminal response. You want, you want to be sure what everybody should be expecting, what we're working towards. For some kids, they don't have speech yet. We, we use sign language, or you're using PECs, or whatever. You're using an assistive technology device. The, the goal is that you know everybody on that team understands what you're working towards, so that you don't frustrate the child and, and have different you know, levels of response that you're requiring and reinforcing. So you identify a starting point. We know he says key. Now we're going to require that he says that in order to get a cookie. Before he wasn't doing that, now we're going to make that. Once he does that reliably, we go on to the next step and we go from there. So you might say he says key, then he has to say uki, then he has to say cookie, something like that. But it's the successive approximations that you're identifying and you're reinforcing. You require the next step when the starting response is always occurring under the SD. So don't move on until you know they're reliably doing it, they've generalized it, that sort of thing. You reinforce the current step, not the previous step that he used to be able to get that reinforcer. Okay? So no longer does he get the cookie when he says key. He now gets it when he says uki. Okay? Don't stay too long on one step. If you do, it can be difficult to move on. It can get not motivating. It can be um, hard for the child to be able to understand what they're supposed to do. Make sure there's, the steps are small enough. A lot of times if you get stuck, it's because you haven't broken it down enough into small enough steps that they can be successful, that they can move on to the next step. So always trying to be thinking about that. You can do forward chaining or backward chaining. These are things where you either teach from the first step to the last step, or you start with the last step that they're doing, and then you teach backwards. This is something where, think about the child. Is the child a big picture child where they feel more successful if in, they are completing that last step, and then you work backwards from there, like tying shoes. So many of my kids do a lot better if I prompt through the time, and then the last step is what they do independently. Because, oh, your shoe is tied, good job. Then we work back. They do the last two steps, and then they go all the way to the beginning. Some kids, it's hard. You have to start with the beginning, because if you start with the end, you can't get them to go back. They're happy enough they just did that last step. So it, that's the enforcer. They get stuck there. Why? Why should I do that? So you want to think about how your kid is to do that. So you're performing task analysis in order to do change because you want to break that down. This is one of those things we're talking with your team is really important in order to make sure you all understand those steps.